there's one. Not your web, buddy. Cool. Nicely done, mate. Oh, I didn't see that spider whip. <laughs> Fuck.
tell they weed eat it a lot here along this trail. Which sucks. Destroying a whole bunch of medicinal herbs. I have no idea. And then the thorn bushes get all over the trail, so going barefoot is just even more enjoyable. It does take time, as with everything, to re-naturalize yourself, to undo the atrophy and the stagnation that has built up. You hear a lot of people say that they have very sensitive feet. I can't walk on hardly anything without it being excruciating. And it's part of being human is we have this body that is able to sense things and be sensitive. That's, that's natural to, to be very sensitive to stuff. But with the feet, if you're wearing shoes all the time and cutting your connection off from the ground, you're not going to be expelling, excreting, sweating like you're supposed to be. And so your feet is going to, are going to be clogged. Atrophied. The, the shoes atrophy the muscles, the ankles. So at first, it is going to be difficult to start going barefoot again. And I mean, I went through this too as well. But then, the more you do it, the more experiences you have, the more aware you are during those experiences, into the feeling, out of the mind, being aware of the things that are occurring, the natural processes. It amazes me sometimes how instinct takes over and it's like my feet naturally find the perfect places to step without me having to, oh, there's a clear spot. It's clear. And then I notice, I mean, this is a meditation. There's, life is a meditation. This is part of, uh, I don't know, people call it a walking meditation, but really it's all meditation because it's a state of mind, it's a focus. Where are you putting your focus? How are you focusing? And it seems like, 
especially when I do my jogs, when I jog barefoot and get into that state of flow, then I'll become aware that my feet are just finding the perfect places. My, my eyes are scanning, but I'm not necessarily putting my focus into that. I'm just allowing my eyes to scan the terrain and then my feet to naturally find the perfect places to step. But then I notice if I allow my awareness to go back into the just solely the mental and I get out of that flow state, that's when my feet find things to step on that are not too pleasant. So it's just a beautiful reminder of whenever you're allowing that flow state to happen, you, you just naturally find the right steps. You don't have to force it or even really try. Where the trying comes in is in trying to get out of the mind. Trying to just allow. Trying to forget about trying. It may take some time for you to feel the natural state to come back, the balance, the relaxed nature whenever you get out into nature from the cities, from wearing shoes, from being cut off. But the more you do it, the more frequently you ground yourself, the less time that will take. And then eventually you just get back into your natural state and stay there. Get out of the thorn. And I don't recommend everyone just go out and start jogging barefoot on trails. Because it did take a little bit of time for me to get used to for my instincts, I guess, to kick back in so that I could jog and not just totally dismantle and destroy my feet, which is a part of it. Um, you might say that's kind of high risk because there's a whole bunch of roots and rocks and thorns and whatnot that can really mess up your feet. And at first, you're going to be more susceptible to not finding the right steps to take because you're going to be too in the mind. But 
jogging barefoot on the trails, that's a meditation in and of itself, as is everything. Because you do have to be aware of the terrain. It is a constant shifting of focus to be aware of some of the larger objects and foot placement and then also not be, not allowing the mind to get too caught up in the perception mode and not cutting your feeling off and also your ankles and feet and calves will start to become more natural again, less atrophied. Those muscles will reamizen and that will work its way from the bottom up with your body alignment and posture and overall health. It, it begins with the feet, you know. You have poor foot health, ankle, poor leg health. Your your balance is going to be easily swayed and going to be, the more you get into your body, the more you bring your body back to life, the more you re-inhabit your body, the more you will realize that as your body becomes, as you get more feeling into the body, it will translate into other aspects of your life and it will be a reflection of the mind the balance of the body the balance of the mind those two are intimately connected as well as strength and endurance so when you train your body you're, you're always also training your mind there's no separation there When you dedicate yourself to some kind of a practice, your your body and your mind both benefit greatly. Because how can it not? There's no distinction there, unless you convince yourself that there is. Which is why we are in the sad state that we are in right now. It's because. We've taken other people's words for what reality really is. And then we took that and convinced ourselves. Of what is really real. Because we figured it out. With our smart minds. What do we need the body for? When we can just be so smart with our minds. We might as well just be robots. Because we don't need these bodies. What good are they? Without the feeling aspect, there's, there's no human aspect. Which is, uh, a nice way of looking at how people are. It's not nice, it's just, it's sad really, but I mean, people have become, basically already become cyborgs, a lot of them, bio-robots, because they're so detached from their feelings.
disconnect. The disconnect is living in these cities away from nature, away from our natural connections. What does this do? This cuts off from our feelings. And when that happens, it cuts off our humanity. And when that happens, we objectify nature. We see it as an it, which is a word that makes it easy to see things as dead or alive. As objects. In the natural world, there is no object, it is this essence. Is uh, to what degree of life is there, of transformation, of transmutation? And so this is where we find ourselves once again. Going headfirst down the path towards raising the mind up over all else. Forgetting about the feeling, forgetting about the connection, and so nature is forcing some of us to remember her. You could call these natural disasters, but really the disaster is what we've done to nature. It's a reflection of how we view our inner nature as well. The connection that we have with our true self. So if you haven't been paying attention, which there's not a lot of people that are able to do that nowadays, nature has been telling you for some time now in increasing intensity that you need to wake the fuck up or 
get the fuck out. If you haven't noticed the intensity of the extremes are steadily increasing and they will continue in that path until more people start coming back to truth and taking that truth back to the land. Once we start treating I want to be clear about this. I mean living with the land, not off of the land. But with it, allowing it, your little piece of land, to be an extension of yourself, of all of you, beyond the body. And I'm not just saying I'm not only saying that you're not, you're not the body. You are not just the body. You can be much more than just the body. But the more that you inhabit the body, the more aware you will be able to become that you're not just the body. So the answer is not going astral, getting out of body, to realize truths, to see things, to have new experiences, or views of things. That's the natural process, progress that happens the more you inhabit all of your being, the totality of your beingness. Then you become aware of the subtle nature the subtlety of your mind, the modes, the focus, the different aspects that you have access to. We, we skip steps and, and then try to hold the thing that we've Think that we got to, we try to hold that up and say, oh hey, this is what we are, this is what we can do. But there's a natural progression and an allowance that happens that makes those, that allows those things to become clear. They will just happen. It's part of the process of reintegrating, of re enlivening. Kind of like what science does, an aspect of science, with drugs or just just the mentality is dissecting nature, dissecting a plant and finding one little chemical and oh that's the active ingredient. So we will mass produce this and hold this up high, on high, and say that this is the cure, or that this is the medicine. And in doing that, they're forgetting about the true medicine, the holistic viewpoint. 
all the other aspects of the plant that, that also aid the inactive ingredients. And it's the same, it's the same with us. There, there are inactive things inside of us, but that's because we forgot how to engage them. It's all still there waiting. Waiting for you to activate. How do you do that? You go into the feeling. Go into the nature. Allow the outer nature to remind you of the truth of your inner nature. And you will, you will feel this. This is gnosis. You will feel the wisdom. So whenever I say the proof is in the pudding, and you are the pudding, this is what I mean. Gnosis. Feeling. You don't need to think about it. You just need to feel it. And then the, the knowledge will come to you because you've already felt it. So the knowingness will find its way to you for you to understand it mentally with thoughts, with your lexicon, with your limited way of understanding the language of life because we've forgotten the language of nature. We've forgotten how to read from the book that is all around us, the book of life. We've forgotten how to listen to it, how to feel. This, this is how you activate again, you feel. And a lot of times this is going to take many different shapes and forms and extremes and it can get very depressing whenever you awaken yourself back to truth and then you look at the sad state that we're in there's so many so many people that want to go about thinking that it's normal to be cut off from your feelings and then that's how you should be. That we need to focus on material stuff and money because, because we evolved. We grew smarter than nature. No, no, no. We, we de-evolved ourselves. Nature has everything, and that's, that's how it was from the beginning. Nature is your medicine, and it will remind you of what is inside you, of the connections. <laughs>